Hello everyone, this is Vicar John Ministries and I'm pa Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I welcome you all <clears throat> to our service this week and I wel welcome you to come every week. Uh, we do this just to uh, uh, have a, a, a way uh, uh, that you can worship. If you can't make it to church for some reason or whatever, uh, Tune us in. Tell your neighbors to tune us in also. Uh, anyways, before we begin today, um, we have our usual announcements. You can find us on Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John. And our website is vicarjohn.com. You can pause at any time, and I encourage you to pause at any time during the worship service uh, and play some music. Uh, there's lots of good music, praise music and hymns on, on, uh, on YouTube. And, and some suggestions for this week are, His name is wonderful. There's something about that name. And I know who holds tomorrow. What a great song. Uh, anyway, we also have, uh, I'll encourage you to push the pause button uh, during a time of prayer that will be coming up here in just a moment. And uh, uh, so, uh, um, just a moment, I'm getting getting our, our bells ready here to go uh, to ring in the hour worship. But uh, during our prayer time, just uh, uh, when I give you the cue just just pausing one time of prayer and it's so very important that all, we all do this and not just once a week but uh, many times during the day uh, let's start with that so anyway the title of today's sermon is saving face or saving grace uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today and our number two strange saying is isn't it strange how we send jokes and emails and they are forwarded right away but when we are going to send uh, messages about God we think twice before we share it with others hmm something about that huh okay and and uh, so that, that that about does that so now we'll have the ringing in the hour of worship And let's open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the love you always give us. And we ask that you put the Holy Spirit upon us, Lord, as we come to worship you and only you. And if there's any bad spirits, just cast them out, Lord. Cast them right out wherever we are, in the street or wherever. Just cast them out. We thank you that we can always come to you like this in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our proverb today comes from Proverbs 17, 12. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool in his folly. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so uh, our, our call to worship today comes from Psalm 24. That's right after Psalm 23, the famous Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm 24, and it's a short one, so I'm just going to read it. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear to a false, uh, what is, by what is false. He will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek your face, O Lord, God of Jacob? Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, and the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Now is time to have our prayer time. We're going to go into a time of prayer, and, and I just ask that you... Uh, uh, um, Send prayer requests. Uh, we, we'd love to have them, uh, and, and we get them, and we, uh, we pray about them. So that's, a, that's always a good thing. Praying is a good thing. Just remember that. It's never a bad thing. It's always a good thing. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's go to have a word of prayer now. O glorious God, maker of all things great and small, we praise you to the highest. We know that we are not worthy of your love, and we ask for forgiveness of our sins. Wash us clean in the blood and body of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button and go into a time of prayer. Well, gracious Lord, we, we, uh, we really uh, have made a mess of this world, Lord, and, and uh, we just uh, ask that you help us to, to right wrongs and, and wherever they are being done and, and uh, uh, just help us to try to get back on track of whatever we're doing. Uh, it, it goes from uh, we have bad weather here and there. We just had a big storm this week again close to us here. Uh, we, we suffer, uh, seems like continuously, from bad leadership uh, in our governments and, and uh, everywhere else, Lord. They're, everybody's uh, all about me, you know, give me give me uh, and that's what it's what's really bad and that leads us to just uh, all the all the uh, people who have made bad choices uh, I don't think we have bad people we just have people that have made bad choices Lord and help us to set them on the right track help us to send set them on the track to you Lord uh, for you are uh, the the greatest uh, that's ever been and ever will be Lord and we just ask for help uh, in, in helping people come to you Lord we would ask that uh, we hold up some people and ask that you bless them in, pl in ways that are pleasing to you we're thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world those with the COVID virus and, and the workers that go with it uh, with uh, the police uh, uh, in various places we ask that you uh, uh, be with uh, um, our leaders once again Lord who seem to have uh, lost their skills of leadership Lord we ask that you be with our troops wherever they may be uh, we ask that you be with uh, our communities Lord as, as we are in full uh, full summer right now Lord and and just keep us all safe and bring us back again Lord uh, next week Lord we uh, we know you're always busy and you're always working and and sometimes uh, we feel that you're neglecting us and uh, when actually oftentimes it's us who are neglecting you and help us to remember that to come to you in prayer uh, at least once a day lord if not several times a day lord help us to come to you we just thank you for the love that you give us this love that just never never ends and we just uh, praise you as we pray the prayer that jesus taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from uh, Mark 6, verses 14 through uh, 29. And uh, this is kind of a familiar section too. Uh, King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that there, that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah. Still others claimed, he is a prophet. Like... Like the one in, he, he is a prophet, like the one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given the orders to have John arrested and had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a, nursing a, nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and the dinner guest. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever, I, whatever you ask, I'll give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with a request. I want you to, to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but 
Because of his oath and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent out an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back the head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On, he on hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The words of God for the people of God, and all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of you may already know this, uh, uh, but I'm a pretty strange guy. I, I'm one of these people who reads a story for the sake of the story. Uh, I have read hundreds of books in my life, and for the most part, I couldn't tell you one thing about most of them. Uh, this is because, you know, I read them for entertainment. Uh, for the most part, if you give me a book and want me to find the deep meaning of the writer, you've given the book to the wrong person. I love uh, mystery stories and westerns, and I, I generally read them uh, uh, most nights before I go, go to bed. I, I don't read them for anything other than the story, for entertainment. I think I can safely say that I have not watched many movies that are better than the book. Uh, this is just something, there's just something about the printed word in my imagination. In today's reading, we have Mark giving us an account of the death of John the Baptist. It's a story that we probably all know, and it's, it's, it is easy to just move on and, and dismiss this as just another story. However, I would like us to take a look at this a little bit closer and, and look at what happened and see if we can find ourselves in the midst of all these characters. Mark Conley tells a story of a brilliant kid in his high school class in, in New Jersey. Uh, plus, he was one of the really good kids in the school. He graduated and went uh, on and had a great education and, and got a fantastic job. It wasn't too long before he was climbing that old ladder of success in, at his company, and he finally became the chief financial uh, officer of his corporation. He would ev eventually become one of the most powerful businessmen in the United States. But somewhere along the line, in all of this success, he had learned to cheat a bit. Mark doesn't think that this man started out by cheating, but somewhere along the line, he decided to negotiate his sin rather than eradicate it. In the end, he had spun one of the greatest webs of sin that corporate America has ever seen. The name of this classmate was Andy Fastow, and you may have heard of him uh, as, as he was the CFO of Enron, which had that tremendous pyramid scam here a few years back. He was indicted on 78 charges of fraud, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. You can see, uh, you see, when, when we try to negotiate our sin or, or try to work within sin, the web that you weave doing this just ensnares you. Sin is always a bad thing and never, never a good thing. When you have to choose between the lesser of two sins, you should be refusing to choose at all. As we begin today, we are talking about King Herod. Herod, this is Herod Antipas, uh, the son of Herod the Great, who had all the babies killed in Bethlehem, if you remember. As a matter of fact, Herod the Great had many of his sons killed for various reasons. He had also married many times. So this was the role model for our Herod in today's story. We need to know that this Herod also had a half-brother named Herod Philip. Uh, they were both. They both had another half brother named uh, Aristobulus. Aristobulus had a daughter named Herodias. She became the wife of Philip. Therefore, Philip had married his own niece. Uh, they had a daughter named Salome, uh, who is in our reading. Uh, I just want to give you a little history here of what was going on uh, before we take a look at this lesson. Antipas went to Rome uh, to meet, and he met Herodias and Philip. Herodias now was a deceitful woman who wanted power. Uh, so she set out to win Antipas, and she succeeded. They returned to Israel and wed. So now Antipas is also married to his niece and his brother's wife. 
<laughs> Does this sound like a convoluted mess or what? It it's, it's, sounds like the storyline of half the television sh shows that are aired today, and, and they are just uh, pretty much garbage. Some uh, people have had their senses dummied down so badly that they might not think this is so bad at all. However, I think that most of us can see that these are really some, some pretty terrible acts. Sin is sin, and, and, and sin should never be celebrated. So that's the history of what, what was happening at, to this point. The first bit of deception in this passage comes from the first line, King Herod. Herod was not a king. Only Caesar could proclaim him to be a king, and he hadn't done this. But Herod liked to think of himself as a great king. He would later be removed from office and sent to exile where uh, he and Herodias died. Now, we have a king who is no king at all, uh, who had been raised by a barbaric father who passed his sense of no moral values onto his son. Herod hears about Jesus. He hears all the wonderful things and miracles that Jesus has done. Herod figures that Jesus had to be John the Baptist returning from the dead. Or at least uh, he had to be uh, some great prophet returning from the dead. I think that's just really kind of sad how superstitious these people really were. They actually believed that people could return from the dead. I know that in today's world, we would, we would never think anything like this over the years. We would never say that Elvis is still alive, Elvis Presley, and living somewhere in seclusion. We would never think that John Lennon never died either. And I'm sure that there are never any wild stories about Michael Jackson. Jackson or Prince or any other famous person, I'm so glad that we are immune to this. Now we have a flashback. Herod remembers John the Baptist. John had come to uh, this so-called king and told him that it was unlawful for him to marry his brother's wife. He told the most powerful man in Israel that he was committing adultery. Now, I don't know about you, but that would have to take, uh, you'd have to have some sort of guts to do something like this. Just a few years ago, if you remember, we had a president of this country in a similar situation. His behavior was totally immoral. Uh, and, and the more evidence that came out, the more he denied it. This man uh, thought that he was powerful enough so that whatever he said was the truth. Personally, I think this was a very disgusting time in our history, but it also told us a lot about where our morals were heading in this country, and it explains a lot about today's immoral politicians. Anyway, back to our story. Herodias uh, was furious about this, as this would upset her whole scheme for power. So Herod protects John because he kind of likes John from from having uh, from from Herodias by having him arrested. You know, he was a real buddy. You know, uh, now John had not done anything wrong, but he was arrested. Herod continues on his sinful ways, uh, but Herod, you know, was kind of a funny man. He was highly superstitious, as we see, and, and also curious. He wanted to know what John had to say. This is the same curiosity that he would show with Jesus a little bit later. Uh, then comes the part of the story we all know. Herod decides to throw a birthday party for himself and, all, uh, and, and invites all the high-ranking officials. And, of course, things get a little crazy, uh, and his stepdaughter does some sort of crazy dance. After this, Herod says he would give this girl anything up to half of his kingdom. Well, the girl is probably not much more than 14 or so, so she has to consult with her mother as to what to do. Then she goes back and asks Herod for the head of John the Baptist. Now we come to the point where Herod could have stopped this whole thing if he had the desire to do that. Uh, I remember reading uh, about this type of thing in other places in the Bible. We are led to believe that a king cannot change his mind. Uh, however, if he is a king, right, then he can change his mind and do whatever he wants. He can do anything he wants. The only thing that this king and others we have read about will lose is a little face. Uh, they will lose a little bit of, of that pride. Uh, they may not be held in such high esteem. Uh, this is, was a huge problem then, and it's just as big for us today. I believe we've had many presidents and leaders of this country who have done evil things. Uh, they continue to do these things because if they stopped, then they'd have to admit that they were wrong. And, be, and because they are president or someone in lots of, who has lots of power, they can do no wrong.
It's not just the leaders who have trouble here. We all have this problem. Uh, no one likes to be told that they are wrong. I don't like to be told that I am wrong. The difference between us, you know, and, and a president or a politician is that we don't have nearly as much to lose. Although some of us might even debate this. Peter Lauman tells a great story of saving face and, and the distance uh, we will go to save face. It seems that there was this really well-to-do family who wanted to give the, the father, the patriarch, a gift that contained their family history. So they hired a professional biographer to write it and they cautioned him about the black sheep of the family, Uncle George, who was executed in the electric chair for murder. The biographer was uh, given the instructions to handle this situation. When he finished, then he finished the book, and it was presented to the father, who was overjoyed by it. Uh, he was paging through it when he came upon the history for Uncle George. It read, okay, Uncle George occupied a chair of applied electronics at an important government institution. He was attached to this position by the strongest ties, and his death came as a real shock. <laughs> we will do anything to cover up the truth about ourselves. Uh, and this is all the wrong kind of thinking. Just about everything that Herod did here was wrong. He finally finds himself in, in a position where he feels that he has no way out except to murder an innocent man. And this is exactly what he did. And, and his conscience bothered, bothered him when he saw Jesus. His conscience tells him that Jesus is the risen John the Baptist. Whether we like it or not, one of the things about Herod is that he isn't a lot different than many of us. We like to think that we are far more important than we actually are in this world. Once we have made up our minds on something, it is oftentimes very hard for us to change. And this may lead us to do things, to do things we don't want to do. It's kind of like when you tell a lie, you know. You need, then you need to tell two more lies to cover up the first lie, and then after that you gotta tell four more to cover up those two, and on and on it goes. And it's too long before all you say is a lie. This is what was going on for Herod. If this is how your life is, is going, then listen up, because here comes some good news. Guess who's in town? Jesus Christ is in town. Herod had heard of him, and he chooses to ignore him. How many people do you know like this? There are many, many people in this world, in this country, that know Jesus, yet they refuse to accept him. There is a bit of good news in this passage because we find Herod will get another chance when he meets Jesus face to face during the trial of Jesus. But we also know how that story plays out as Herod will once again reject Jesus. But Jesus Christ is a wonderful God. He's a great God. He's a loving God. But he is also a God of only so many chances. Time will run out on people if they do not turn to Jesus. Luis Palau, the evangelist, tells a story of a young uh, man or woman, I don't remember which it was, who came to a, one of his crusades that were held in Mexico City uh, a few years back, if I remember right, it was Mexico City. Anyway, Luis uh, told the crowd of thousands of people the way to salvation. He told them that this was a night to make that decision. Many came forward and received the saving grace from Jesus Christ that night. However, this one person couldn't make up their mind and they didn't come forward and they didn't receive Jesus. When the crusade was over, this person left and right in front of the stadium of the where the crusade was being held, a car hit this person and they were killed. This is a sad and tragic story. And unfortunately, this story plays out all over the world every day. Just as sadly are those who feel that the church is not a place to bring these things up. They feel that we should only talk about things that are good and that make us feel good. Well, I agree to a point. We should talk about that stuff, but we also need to talk about the bad things that make us feel terrible when we do them. In other words, sin. We need to talk about sin. And then we will have much more incentive to listen to Jesus. This is what this whole passage is all about. We are all Herods. We all get caught up in the web of sin and unbelief. When you notice things like that, this happening in your life, don't give up. 
Jesus will always be there for you. And if you don't know Jesus yet, then ask him into your heart. Uh, confess your sins and, and, and ask him into your heart so that you too can have this wonderful feeling of acceptance under all circumstances. When these things <clears throat> do happen, don't give up. Look up. Look up. Jesus is there waiting for you to ask him for help. Go to him. I would like to close with a little story from Martin Wiles about Luciano Pavarotti. A Pavar Pavarotti said that when he was a boy, his father, who was a baker, introduced him to the wonderful world of music. Uh, the local tenor, a local tenor in Italy took him on as a vocal student, as a voice student. He also enrolled uh, in a nearby teacher's college. When he graduated, he asked his father, shall I be a teacher or a singer? His father replied, if you try to sit on two chairs, you will fall between them. For, li for life, you must choose one chair. Pavarotti chose one chair. It took him seven years, more years of study and frustration before he finally made his first professional appearance. And it took another seven years for him to reach the, reach the Metropolitan Opera. He reminds us that no matter what we do in life, whether it's laying bricks, or writing books, or singing opera, choose one chair and stick to it. Commitment is the key. The same thing can be said about life in Jesus Christ. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. Make Jesus your chair. Think of all the broken people in the Bible who did not choose Jesus. Think about all your friends and family who have not chosen Jesus. There's a mission field right out there in your own community, maybe your own family. Help us to carry this message to all of our friends and neighbors, whether, whether it's by our actions or by our words. Jesus wants everyone to be a part of him and be with him for eternity. Uh, you can help. You can help, even if it's in a very small way. Jesus wants to give you all that he has. I ask you that you take his hand and accept this wonderful give, gift of love that you don't deserve. None of us do. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. <clears throat> gracious, Lord, we <clears throat> gracious Lord, we thank you once again, Lord. We ask that you help us. Help us to look about our world, Lord. There are so many people that don't know you. So many people that only think they know you. Help us to reach out with words and actions that represent you that they may find the way home to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship service for this week. I thank you for joining us, and I ask that you join us again next week. Uh, and Praise the Lord. Now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you, and may his face shine upon you as you go out into this wonderful world that he made just for you, spreading his great love. Go in God's peace. Thank you. And amen.